Hello, in today's video, I will be going over the assembly of the Mobius 4 extruder. The Mobius 4 extruder improves on and is a replacement for the Mobius 3 extruder as our in-house do-it-yourself Bowden extruder by Voron Design. This extruder was designed by Mr. Russian Cat Food himself and includes many improvements in design that have been learned over the years. It features a belt loop tensioning system from the iconic Voron belted extruder, the drive core, is from the Mobius 3 extruder, and the latching guidler system are from the clockwork or pocket watch extruder found on the afterburner or V0. Overall, it is a simpler design and a simpler build. Also, the amount of printed material required to build this extruder is about half of the Mobius 3. And now, let's go ahead with the build. So starting off the build, you will need some hardware. We have our printed parts. We have a 188 millimeter, six millimeter wide GT2 belt loop. We have two GT2 20 tooth pulleys. Uh, these are the five millimeter bore, six millimeter wide. We have two F695 2RS bearings. We have our Bontech BMG extruder kit along with the spring and thumb screw. If you do not have the thumb screw, uh, you can just use a regular screw. We have our NEMA 17 motor. We have a 5 by 50 millimeter shaft. Now you can grind the flats on this as per the manual, or you can simply grind one continuous flat down the side of the pin. And we also have assorted M3 screws and a Triangle Labs Bowden collet. So the first thing we are going to assemble is our 80 tooth gear. And for that, you will need the printed 80 tooth gear along with one of the 20 tooth. And we're going to deflange the top of this gear. And the easiest way to do that is take your 20 tooth, put it on a screwdriver, and then with a bottle opener, simply pop off the top flange. And then we're going to insert the deflange 20 tooth into the 80 tooth. Make sure the gearing matches up and then press it on. And then we're going to install five M3 by eight button head screws. There we go. We put that to a side. We're gonna take our drive shaft and assemble that. Now with your Bontec BMG gear kit, one side is the idler and the other one with the set screw is the drive gear. And we're going to install that on our drive shaft. And then we're going to position it in this orientation, eight millimeters from the end of the drive shaft. Make sure you do have a little bit of Loctite on it to prevent your set screw from coming loose. Be very careful tightening these set screws. It's very easy to strip them. Next, we are going to take our printed Spacer, install that. And then we are going to install our first F695 bearing with the flange towards the BMG gear. Put that to the side. We are going to assemble the idler next. So for the idler, you do have some pin bearings in there. You may need to install them. And what we're gonna do is I am gonna grease these up a little bit. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of, I use white lithium in there. Put your finger over the one end, push the pin in, and this will force the grease into the bearings. And then clean any excess off. You don't want this getting into your print. And then we are going to install it into our idler body here. There we go. And make sure it spins freely. Now the next steps will require that we have our heat set inserts installed. So we'll go ahead and install them now. And for installing heat set inserts, use your soldering iron set to the lowest temperature it can go, which is usually roughly around the temperature that ABS melts. In my case, mine's set for 220 Celsius. And you're going to 
gently push the heat set inserts into the plastic. You want to push them in with some good force, but you don't want to cook the plastic doing so. And you want them sitting flush or just below the surface. And we are also going to install the one in the tension arm at this time as well. Pay attention when you're installing them, there is a chamfered side that goes in first. And there we go. With our heat set inserts installed, we can move on to body assembly. So take the main portion of the body. We're going to take our assembled drive shaft and we're going to push it into position and the bearing should fit into the location and snap into place. And we're going to take the other portion, make sure it's in the correct orientation, and install that. Should line up. And at this time, you're going to want to check the alignment of the feed path for your filament. So you're going to want to ensure that with everything screwed together, that your teeth are right in the middle of the feed path. If they are not, take this time to loosen the set screw and adjust. Once you're happy with the location, continue with the assembly. Install your second F695 bearing. Make sure that all lines up. There we go. And now we're going to screw everything together. For this portion of the assembly, you will need four M330 screws. Now for these screws, uh, don't tighten them fully until they are all installed. And if you tighten them too much, you may bind things up. Once the four screws are in, just give everything a function test. Make sure your drive gears are lined up properly now that everything is tight. And then we can install the thumb screw and spring. This is how you adjust the tension on the filament while it's feeding. Now once our body is assembled, we can go ahead and install our 80 tooth gear that we assembled earlier. Now I had mentioned that you do need to use button head screws. And I was using socket head. Unfortunately, there is a clearance issue with socket head. So you will need to use button head screws. I've gone and swapped them out for flat heads because I'm actually out of uh, button heads in that size. So when you go to install this, make sure your grub screws, your set screws are backed off. And when you're putting it on, ensure that you have a finger or something keeping the pin from moving. Because right now it does kind of move a bit. We don't want that pin sticking out the back there. That will throw off the alignment of our feed for the filament. So keep a finger there holding it flat while you put on your gear. And you're going to want to push it right up against the bearing. Ensure that the flat lines up with one of the set screws. And then tighten it, again using some form of thread locking compound. Take your TL collet and you're going to push this in it should press into position might be a tight squeeze there we go now you can use pretty much any motor you have on hand this one is out of an old printer i'm using it as an example but if you are installing this in a way where this portion needs to be flush up against something such as the back of a printer you have a panel here you will need to use a pancake stepper um, if you are using a motor that sticks out past, you just have to be aware that when it comes to mounting the extruder, 
any motor will pretty much work. Uh, we do have recommended motors in the bill of materials. Um, but again, if you are wanting to flush mount this, you will need a pancake stepper. And take your 20 tooth, installing that. Set screws on a flat. Thread locking compound. Orientation of the wires depends on your mounting setup. Now, for screws, you will need one M312. We're going to install that one first, and that's the one that installs right next to the 80 tooth. And we're going to screw that down, but we're going to leave it loose. So that way there is still a little play there. And then we need two M316s and two M3 washers. And again, we're going to screw these in, but leave them loose. Now at this point, you are going to want to adjust your 20 tooth gear on your motor to ensure that it lines up with your 80 tooth gear. And you can tweak this later once you put the belt on if there is any issues. Now for installing the belt, you need to make sure that your screws are loose enough that you can pivot your motor. Pivot it to the downward position. Feed the belt over both sets of teeth. And then to tension it, simply rotate the motor back up. Now you don't need to over tighten the belts. If you tighten them too much, you can induce lean, which could cause rubbing. So once you're happy with the way everything is and you have enough tension, simply tighten your screws to lock it into position. And again, make sure everything is moving freely and not rubbing. And once that is done, your Mobius 4 extruder is assembled. At this point, you can put it in your printer, calibrate your e-steps and motor current, and start printing with it. I hope you have found this video informative. If you do have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments below. I do have a Twitter now. It's at 3DP Nero. Please join there for any updates on when I am streaming or upcoming builds and projects I am doing. Don't forget to join the Voron Discord. It's a great community there. If you're looking for any help with any of your Voron related builds, plenty of people there are willing to help and we have a great community. Also, if you do like this video and would like to see more content such as this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I have many projects coming up in the near future and by subscribing you can make sure you follow along with them. Thank you and have a great day.